Hey everybody, welcome back to our channel, Kono Pro. In this video, we're gonna be doing some subfloor work. So as you can see in this old school subflooring, the subfloor was pretty damaged. And also what I'm pointing out right there is that they did an, ex they did an addition back in the day, probably you know, 40, 50 years back. Um, I'm not really sure on the timing, but it seemed like a long time ago they did an addition and they just butted everything up to the existing house when they added on. And so they left a section right there. We, you can see the old stucco and they didn't splice on because they you know, should have removed that stucco down past the subflooring. Then they should have spliced on properly, like finger jointed all of the one by six planking, subfloor planking down and finger jointed it all together to really tie in that, that structure. And you see that termite damage I just pointed out. So we're gonna be doing two things here. We're gonna be replacing a lot of the termite damage, and we're also going to be tying in that old structure, which you know we're gonna be doing it the right way, which it should have been done that way um, when it was first built, that addition, whenever that was done. So what we're gonna do is finger joint. So we're cutting like basically every other plank and whatever plank is rotted out of there and then we're going to splice everything together and when you do this one by six planking um, it's just standard dug fur that you can get at your local hardware store and it, it you just basically cut a 45 degree on it or a square back cut on it and it'll just fit right into the existing joist and land right in between the existing layout but you see right here what I'm doing is I'm cleaning out what they, I'm doing what they should have done back in the day when they first built this structure. When they put that that first joist there, their floor joist up against that stucco, they should have removed all of that stucco and then slammed that floor joist up against the existing rim joist. And then they could have, you know, tied in their structure and spliced all their one by six together at that time. Would have been a really good way to do it, but they didn't do that. So what we're doing is we're just gonna bring down the stucco down to the bottom you know so it's below the planking elevation and then we're just going to splice on and that's going to tie everything together the structure's been there for many many years and everything's still standing but we want it to be more secure so we're going to tie everything together and then also our perimeter blocking any area where we exposed on the side when we removed our one by six there's perimeter blocking that either was rotted but termite damage or just wasn't there so we're throwing in some four by six and of course that is a little overkill you can use some two by six you know or whatever you know if you have two by ten floor joists two by twelve whatever it is you can use that as your perimeter blocking um, but this four by six I felt like it was really good for this structure because I want to put some MST straps and tie in the existing structure to the new structure so I want everything to be locked in really tight and I also, that's a high traffic area coming in that entry door there. So I figured it was best to put a four by six there to run my new um, planking on top of that four by six to give it really good support. And then that way, you know, for the future, walking in that high traffic area, you won't get movement right there, which is pretty common for an entryway in these old houses. All right, we just finished off all of our perimeter blocking and now we're gonna start laying down our planking. And they don't really line up too well, um, the, that little addition and the existing subflooring. So we're gonna have to cut down one or two of our planks to fit in between, sort of taper down from six inch to like five inch um, to taper down and, and, and fit into that existing subfloor on the other side 
and the existing subfloor on the on the house side. And so as you can see, is basically what I do is I start off by taking one of the planks and I just cut a 45 on it. I cut a 45 on it, I lay it down where as soon as it meets a solid joist below it, then I just mark that joist, I cut that out with my skill saw, and then I just lay down that 45 right in there, and then do the same with the other side, and just start, start doing it. Just start laying them in, laying them in. You want to stagger your cuts. You don't want to have two joints right next to each other. Sometimes it'll sort of end up that way, but you really don't. You want to try to stagger them, at least joist to joist. And um, when you nail down, nail down your subfloor planking, you want to make sure um, you're using the proper nails. And you want to make sure that they're they're flush mounted. They don't just go all the way down into the wood. They, they sort of just barely flush down and countersink just a little bit so it locks down the planking and you still want to have your spacing too you want to have a little bit of you know an eighth inch play in between each plank because these plankings uh, the way this subfloor the subflooring was designed back in the day was to allow a little bit of seismic movement and things like that with this subflooring so it gives it uh, some some stability to the structure and of course with expanding and contracting you want to make sure it has a little bit of room to do that that's really the main thing after this wood acclimates for a week or two it'll expand and contract and you don't want any kind of buckling so you can even go through afterwards if it's really tight in some areas and just run your skill saw through and just make sure it's the blade depth of the planking and just run through and give it some sort of expansion joints on the seams that way it has room to breathe all right so it's basically like just a puzzle you know you start taking out pieces you lay them in you mark your 45 you take a, you know you cut it and then you lay your plank down and then see where it dead ends and then mark your 45 over there and then lay your plank down over there and just keep going that way and then everything will start lining and tying into each other really well okay um, in this build, we have a couple pieces where that, you know, ended up being pretty small at the end. That's fine because we had enough backing below it, but typically you want to have, you know, no less than two feet. You know, if you're pushing it on a foot, but two foot would be the, the least size planking that you want to have. So you want to make sure most of your planking is a little bit more than at least two feet. You know, the corners and stuff like that, you're not going to be able to get that. It's going to be the small, whatever size it comes out to be. Um, depending on the design, but that's just typical. So here we go, cleaning everything up, and we've been splicing in planks, but now we're going to start really laying them in. All right, and it's pretty much like I said. I just lay my plank down, mark my 45 where the joist is, go cut it 45 degree angle, come back in, lay it down, boom, set it on the set it on the plank. And you'll see when you put a square up there to the to the existing subfloor planking, when you put a square on it, and you'll see your 45 lines perfectly up with the floor joists. If the layout's good, and then that's where you're gonna want to cut it. All right, so this plank we have to cut down. So basically it stayed at five and a half on one side and then it went down to like three and a half on the other side. And so we snap that line and then we make that cut and that's basically the piece that's tapered down. The rest of the one by six, we didn't really have to cut, just that one piece. And what I recommend is that you dry fit everything. So you can lock down like your center plank and so there's no movement in there and then from to the right and left of it you just dry fit everything don't nail down any of it and that way you can make adjustments you can make some trims and some cuts on it or replace the planks if they're not really lining up properly once that's done then you can go through and nail it all off that's basically what i'm doing here
tight so now we're going to be tying right up against the wall and when you remove the existing plank if it if it comes out from underneath the old um, plate on your wall then you can reach underneath there and snip those nails if there's any nails coming down and then you can slide your new plank underneath the existing plate bottom plate on your existing wall if you can't do that then you can butt it just cut it smooth and make sure you have good backing there and then you just butt it right up flush against your existing bottom plate on your existing wall and that's how you lay in your planking just like I'm doing right there I'm nailing in some of them to keep you know some of the movement from happening and we basically have everything spliced in and everything looks good so I'm gonna start nailing everything off you see that last little piece how it's just a tiny little triangle typically you you know want to make it a little bit of a bigger piece but since I have such solid backing below it it's absolutely fine all right now I'm gonna start nailing everything off and then it'll basically be ready to go you can put down you know hardwood floors laminate floors party backer board then tile you can do carpet if you'd like vinyl I mean whatever and now that we have this all spliced together it's, it creates a much stronger more you know um, smoother surface to apply your flooring and it's just going to be so good for the long run for this structure go through and start nailing it off we got one little plank to finish but you see I'm nailing it off my nails are just barely countersinking we're using galvanized ring shank 6d nails okay you can use spin shank or rain shank but you want to make sure you use galvanized and we're using number sixes and that's that's good enough for these planks they don't split the planks um, they, they lock in really good and tight and nice and it's all um, specked out so that's the requirement and we went ahead and used that and the six d's are nice but there it is boom finished off subfloor repaired so if you have any comments go ahead and leave them and remember to check out some more content on our channel we do diy projects construction projects i just basically film stuff that i feel like will really help people out especially diyers and people that are just wanting to sort of do this work please subscribe and like and we'll see you on the next video. Thank you, everybody. Kona Pro out.